Um, now, we are going to move to, we've slightly adjusted the programme um, because um, Councillor Tamitha Hall is a very committed um, councillor to Wellington City and she has to leave us earlier than uh, she thought. So, um, Tam, we're opening up the floor to you. Tamitha is a, is a, was, last I saw she was a president of the Victoria, Victoria University Students Association um, first a Maori woman to be in that position and suddenly she's a councillor on for the Wellington City and it's awesome to have someone of her caliber and intensity with us today who um, yeah she was interviewed by Kim Hill the other day and she, Kim Hill could can't hardly keep up and that's saying something um, yeah Tam um, over to you uh, you're talking about what what is decision making look like from your perspective now we um, on council yeah, kia ora koutou. Um, yes, it is. It has all happened very suddenly. Um, I was just talking to Laurie out there, just, just sent her the link real quick so she could jump on and have a watch. Um, but yeah, I've kind of flip-flopped on what I was going to talk about a few times, um, but I've settled on what I'm going to talk about. Um, I do have a, um, a PowerPoint. If I could be made a co-host, I can share my screen. That'd be really cool. Um, but I think, so what I'm going to talk about today is, um, hopefully I'm not talking too loud. Sorry if I am. Um, try, try that now, Tim. What's that? Try the sharing now. Oh, cool, yeah. Awesome. All right. I'm actually, how do I do this? Do I do... Does anyone know how I play this? <laughs> Is there like a play button? Oh, there it is. Got it. Cool. Is that all good? Can everyone see that all good? Me. All right. So, um, so I guess essentially what I'm going to talk about today is, um, yeah, I think it's a kind of odd to have a 23 year old um, being part of governing a city, especially um, a Māori woman. But here we are. It's been fun, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that, and then I'm just going to talk about um, what what um like a what the kind where the goalposts are for in my opinion um young maori um especially urban maori living in places like the capital city of aotearoa um i'm really lucky that anna went before me because actually she captured a lot of that and i was just nodding my head the whole time like yep that's exactly what we want so i'll be talking a little bit about that and then i thought it might be helpful just um at the end for me to talk about some of the opportunities there are in um Pornike over the next two and a half years for us to get to those um, to get to those goalposts. And I just also wanted to share a bit about um, like as a from a decision making perspective, what some of the things are that um, that shape my decision making and what I've observed shapes my colleagues decisions um, and the, the way that they make those as well. I thought that might be quite helpful because um, yeah, I, I know I would have loved to have known this um, last year and in, my other years of advocacy and stuff. So, yeah, um, kia ora tato, um, um, tēnā te mihi nui kia koutou katoa, um, ko wai au he ri tēnā nō Ngāti Awa me Waikato Tainui hoki, um, e te puaki au um, e tokoroa, um, engari e noho ana au ki um, te whanganui atara e nai anei. Um, so my name's Tamitha Paul, and um, I've got some pics here to, um, to to guide my way through because I'm a bit more of a visual person um, and hopefully I'm going to be able to stay on time too because sometimes I under talk and sometimes I over talk so I'm going to try to keep a good balance. Um, so yeah, hopefully you can see my mouse too. So I'm from Tokoroa, um, pictured up here. So that's um, a small town in the central North Island in the Waikato um, where I was raised and that's shaped a lot of the way that I see things. So a lot of my appreciation for biodiversity and um, appreciation for public transport and all of the things that, you know, urban city dwellers have, especially here in Wellington, um, I've got a massive appreciation for those because I can remember kind of in recent memory, the first time I encountered all of these things. So I think that's a really important context to set right there as I'm, I was a rural Māori and now I'm an urban Māori. Um, Last year, my full-time job was as the president of the Student Association, um, VUSA. Um, and yeah, it was just my full-time job to advocate and represent um, on issues that students at Big Uni cared about, whether it was um, within the university um, or whether it was outside of university. So when we're talking inside university, that's things like grading or um, 
I don't know, decisions that the university makes versus things that are a bit more bigger picture, so like public transport and renting and stuff. And obviously I'm a councillor now, so that's just my, my cool little billboard there. <laughs> um, oh, it's on me next, hang on. Well, yeah, so just to touch on this quickly, some of them, I just wanted to go um, a bit over some of the mahi that I worked on over the years, just so you can get a bit of a feel of um, my kaupapa. Um, so one of the main things I worked on was um, we did a lot of work around mental health and getting additional funding for our counselling services because it was taking like six to nine weeks for people to even see a counsellor and obviously mental health is a big um, a big issue in Aotearoa. So we did a lot of um, campaigning which culminated in um, the Picky Pilot which is actually the first um, pilot in New Zealand that gives um, universal access to 18 to 25 year olds um, to mental health services, whether it's counselling um, apps or tracking apps or um, peer support. So that was quite cool. Um, I did a lot of work throughout my time at uni in the um, kind of preventing sexual harm space. So um, this was a report that I worked at, worked on in my first year at uni um, called In Our Own Words, which was um, a report on um, young people's experiences of um, sexuality education in secondary school, their experiences once they came to university in terms of sexual harassment and assault. And it had a bunch of recommendations on how universities and the government could um, make student spaces safer and eliminate sexual harm. Some of the um, issues more related to my job now um, were advocating for a discount for public transport. So we managed to get a 25% um, discount on public transport. I think Wellington was one of the last cities in New Zealand to have a um, discount for students, for tertiary students. Um, so that was a massive six or seven year long campaign. Shout out to the Regional Council for um, giving us that. Um, another thing that we worked on was the um, rental Warren of Fitness campaign. That was an interesting campaign because it was, it was about trying to regulate the quality of housing in the same way that you might do with a car. But what we found in the end is although Wellington City Council adopted this um, rental warrant of fitness, it actually wasn't that effective as a tool. Um, I think like two landlords in the whole city actually chose to um, to do that scheme. So I thought that was that was a really interesting lesson for me that sometimes tools that you think might work don't actually work. Um, Another big one, a cheeky one that we did last year too, was getting this liquor ban thrown out that was proposed for Calvin Park. Um, and that just really comes from uh, the space of, um, you know, I think punitive policy isn't really helpful. And um, I think the fact that they thought a liquor ban would work, but really would just, you know, find students and chuck them through courts was a reflection of the lack of diversity that was on council prior to this new round of councillors. Um, Oh, sorry. Um, oh, here we go. Um, then, so that was kind of while I was at uni, and then last year, as the while I was the president, these are some of the co-papa that I worked on. So, um, um, to go through them, um, obviously, I think the, the the one of the most hardest thing last year was um, trying to be supportive of our Muslim whānau and students at Victoria, just making them trying to make them feel safe, um, welcome, included. And um, at the table, I think, was really important last year. We had this um, awesome, I think one of the immediate actions that we took um, was to create this wall in the hub, which is really awesome. We've actually got these panels um, preserved for, um, I, I guess, later on, um, if we ever want to whip them out again, um, to, I guess, demonstrate... Um, demonstrate our support and total for our um, Muslim Fano. Another thing was Toy Tu Te Ao. So this was a new event and this was a combination of Wiki o Te Reo Māori and um, the university's environmental week. So that was awesome. Um, last year we had heaps of environmental organisations and Te Reo Māori organisations come in and do this massive expo throughout the week. Um, also did some, some other events. So I'm going to skip on through this. And I guess the last big thing that I did as president as I, as I stood for council, because um, going back to those um, kind of living issues, I really wanted to put out issues on the map and um, give those a voice during the election forum. I didn't actually think it would be successful, but here we are. It turns out that um, Wellington actually want um, the voice of young people represented at the table. Um, and it was cool and really encouraging. So now I'm a city councillor for the central city, Pukehino Lampton Ward. Um, and here was our kind of induction day 
last year when we got formally added to the city. So as you can see, we are quite different in that there are 11 women on our council, which makes us all very proud. Um, two Māori members of council, so myself next to the mayor and then next to me, Jill Day, um, former deputy mayor. So it's awesome having that diversity, but I think we're all aware that we have um, a long way to go as well in terms of representation. But yeah, um, so my responsibilities on council, um, I have the portfolio for climate change and for city safety and more of a social respect, um, more so than in terms of like transport um, related safety and also young people, obviously. Um, so that's what I do. And something cool that I just wanted to plug before moving on is that um, me and my regional council colleague Thomas Nash we run a co-papa called Aotearoa Town Hall and we do these every week and um, they're all up on YouTube and on our Facebook so we do live streams every Monday and we do a whole bunch of different co-papa so you can see from the videos we've done ones on like the economy public health Fano, um, international relations climate change whenua ownership and housing is a really good one transport and urban design um, and really excited to announce that Jade who you've all heard from now is doing a very special series of five town halls um, which I, um, I think the first one is starting on Monday. So really encourage you to jump on there and give it a like and a follow so that you get notified when town halls are coming up because that I'm really looking forward to that series. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about what a, like for me as a young person, as a young young Māori person, as a young Māori woman, what a really livable city and an and a attractive city looks like from my perspective. Um, and I know this aligns with other people as well, but I just wanted to to kind of explore that a little bit and then we'll go to the opportunities that there are to make this a reality. So I think the big thing for me coming from a really like barren town and to, in the sense of like biodiversity is, um, our, is I have this vision of Wellington being like this green metropolis and um, one in which all of our beautiful manu and all of um, Tania's species have a home and, and um, can live anywhere in the city. And um, I think the most, the thing that really made Wellington like home for me was I can still remember every time I saw each of our native birds for the first time, because growing up in Tokyo, you don't see native birds at all um, because there's just pine trees, obviously. So I can still remember seeing each of these manu for the first time. And so, that's been a really special um a really special experience for me and i really i want that to be a, a common experience across aotearoa so i envisage wellington as being this green metropolis and these pictures at the bottom are actually quite funny because i actually first saw these pictures when i saw this video and it was like um what the world would look like if humans were extinct or something like that and i was like i love that i like that can we just like make it look like that anyway um so i i imagine us having this green metropolis where there's you know an abundance of green space where you have um birds and um insects you know native birds native insects um native water species throughout the city um just absolutely covering the city um, where you'd have green roofs, um, green walls, water sensitive urban design, all of those good things that um, just make it a beautiful place to be, to live, to work, to study, to play, all of those things. I, I want us to have this green, beautiful city and just walking through it, I think um, would be incredible. And I think it helps us actually, um, helps us to um, prepare for some of the bigger challenges that we have ahead of us, such as sea level rise, um, increased flooding, um, the need to sequester carbon and all of that good stuff that you all already know about. Obviously, we want a 15 minute city. So that's what I've been thinking a lot about lately um, is can we have a city, even a 10 minute city, I think we could do. But for now, I'm just thinking 15 minute city. How can we have a city that you can get anywhere you need to go all the way from Tawa to all the way out to um, Te Motu Kairangi? Um, how could we have a city that you can get anywhere that you need to be within 10 minutes um, through having um, light rail, through having segregated cycleways so that you can zip? zip through cut through um any of the tra traffic or jump onto jump onto a train or a bus and or walk if you want to like so i'm thinking how can we have that city that's easy to navigate and easy to access i think that's a really big thing for everybody not just young people or students like i think that's something that we all want so that's something that i'm thinking about quite a lot is having that convenient city where you can be anywhere that you need to be and you can meet people from all over the place um so a big part of that is um I think getting our street layout right and, and, and making sure that our, our streets and our places that we occupy are places for people rather than places for private vehicles. Um, 
Another part, I don't know, I, I don't know so much about um, housing and, and kainga and all of that stuff, but I wanted to talk a little bit about, like, so I have been exploring this a bit more now that I've been on council. And um, I, one of the first places I went when I came down to Pōneke was to Tapiti Rangamarai, which unfortunately isn't there anymore. But I think it set out such a beautiful kind of model of how you can have these spaces that are open to everybody, that you can just show up and stay there, um, no matter who you are, where you come from, whether you have money or not, or whether you have something to contribute or not. I think that was a really special part of Wellington City, and I'm just really gutted that it's been just over a year since it burnt down. But I've been thinking a lot lately about our marae infrastructure and how that plays throughout the city and how, if we can give more aroha to our marae as part of our um, places that people can live, but also as part of our social and cultural infrastructure as well. Um, so I think um, a place, so essentially a livable and great city, attractive city for me is one in which everybody has a place to stay, a, a place where they feel they belong and a roof over their head. Um, and I think before I move on from that, actually, I'll go back to this one. Something else that I'm, I've been thinking a lot about lately is, um, especially with Courtney Place, that's a place where young people are all the time. How can we make that a place that is yeah, centred around people, but how can we incorporate um, septed or crime prevention through environmental design into that space? I want to know whether it's possible, because I'm a little bit suspicious, but I, I want to know whether it's possible to actually change people's behaviour in the way that the environment is set out. And I'd, I'd love for us, I think Courtney Place is in dire need of a bit of a makeover, a bit of aroha. So I'm hoping that's something that I can work on as one of the inner city um, councillors um, and I think this whole 880 design principle is important too so having streets and cities that are designed for eight-year-olds and 80 year olds and having accessible places that people can go um, regardless of whether they have a physical disability um, whether they're in a wheelchair whether they have a pram etc um, etc et um, yeah, so I think I'll just talk really briefly. I'm not sure how I'm doing in terms of time, but um, I'll just talk really briefly about some of the opportunities that are coming up over the next two and a half years for us to be able to shape those things, so to make all of these things a reality. Um, so I've got these four big opportunities, I believe. Um, the major one is Let's Get Wellington Moving. So that's, I mean, I know that that's like, been going on for a long time but um, this is an opportunity for us to really move more people with less um, space and um, there's there are just so many opportunities that come up around that and I'm hoping that um, more young people and more people who need to be heard in this conversation can engage in that. Another thing is the district plan which is super important because we're looking at um, over the next 30 years there are meant to be 50 to 80,000 more people in Wellington City um, and so we're looking at density and how we can um, have more houses, increase our housing supply. And um, I think we need to have a, a really hard conversation about character and heritage versus um, density. So that's a, that's a conversation that is coming up. Obviously our long-term long plan, our 10 year plan is another opportunity to really embed new ways of thinking and new ways of doing things. And Te Atakura First to Zero, which is our um, plan on how we're gonna halve our emissions by 2030 and become carbon neutral by 2050, which is my piece of mahi that I'll be leading in my time on council. Um, I know I don't have much time left, so I'll just quickly talk about um, decision making and um, what means the most to me as a decision maker. And I think to a lot of my colleagues as well, I don't want to speak on their behalf, but I can kind of tell when something moves them and when it doesn't. So I think the important thing is um, when people submit to us, I always value people talking about their experiences more than anything else. So when someone comes and starts um, like to an oral to do an oral submission and start talking about numbers and stats and evidence and stuff I, I can see everyone's eyes kind of glaze over a little bit I think we are much keener to hear about people's everyday lived experiences and especially with a council full of women like we want to we want to be I think we want to be able to connect and relate with people's experiences as well um, and so I love hearing people's experiences but also with the with written submissions I love oh, that's when I want to read the evidence and 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 look for further reading and, and that data and get that information but when it comes to oral submissions I think most of us value those personal stories um, or submissions that are visually appear, um, appealing or emotionally compelling 
Um, and then I think values are another important thing. So what I find with my colleagues is, um, and myself is that sometimes, yeah, evidence isn't the most compelling thing or won't be the thing that changes our minds, but it's actually having that shared sense of values and connectedness. Um, and this, this slide right here is taken from the workshop. So most of you have probably already engaged with it, but I found them super helpful in terms of talking about change and um, shared values and connection and stuff. So, um, yeah, I think... That's, I mean, I think most people already know that, but I try to drive that because when we have these long days of hearings and listening to all submissions on all these different projects, I always find that things that are rooted in values and experiences are always a lot more powerful and effective. So I think I'll leave it there before I take up anybody else's time. And yeah, just want to say um, namahi koto. And yeah, if anybody has any questions, I might have overgone my time, but i um, happy as to answer them via email or go for coffee at any point as well. Yes. Kia ora, Tam. It was awesome. Um, and I think probably if it was you who was pushed for time, so <laughs> we could probably have a couple of questions if there are any um, urgent ones. Um, anyone got anything? I certainly know I've got one. You, do you have to rush? Away? Can you stay till the end of this now, or you have to go? Yep, that's all good. I can I can answer a couple of questions or a question cool. too. Um, the question I've got, I suppose, is a bit, if you heard something of what Anna was talking about, and I'm not sure if you caught my quarter, but it was essentially there's a, there's a, there's a gap um, between, you know, people's experiences, people's hopes for the city, and then what actually gets executed. And you maybe you have, you have your time on those councils, not quite, um, you've not quite seen it through yet, but like, sounds like, it looks like, and it feels like to me, a really awesome connected um, council, not all on the same political spectrum, but you know they're all connecting, at least. Um, and what if you can sense sense who we're up against in terms of getting like some radical stuff done? Um, like, yeah, what are the forces that I suppose can you name them that are that are, that are less kind of cohesive making? I think what I've found it's just been so frustrating is that. Um, local government has the potential to be able to do some good radical things but unfortunately there's just like a, just such a heavy concentration of resources and power at parliament that you just really can't like if you look at the issues that cities and towns are facing in terms of um infrastructure whether it's like water and pipes um or whether it's um roading or whatever transport whatever it is um, we just simply don't have the resources to deal with those things effectively and so i think and I think even if we did, you've still got those kind of like systemic, I, I, like I personally think the system that we have needs a total overhaul and I'm talking constitutional transformation wise. What I'd love to see is um, having a parliament that makes those really big overarching decisions. But yeah, I guess a devolution of resources and power out to the regions in which you would have like these bodies made up of, um, yeah, like local government, but sitting at the sitting and more of a like it, they would be more charged with the execution of things, whereas you'd have like this kind of tenoranga tiratanga sphere that over overarches over that that's made up of like iwi and hapu um, who can actually govern what that looks like. And I feel like if you had that decentralization of power and more like meaningful engagement and collaboration and decision making power coming from hapu, then you would have better outcomes. So I think it's like a systemic thing because I thought. I thought if you had the right people in the decision-making seats that you'd get better outcomes, but I think unfortunately that's not the case and it's a system that actually isn't working. Um, and there's all, also a very skilled and um, a very skilled and um, I don't really know how to describe it, but I feel like our civil service, they like, I feel like they're awesome and hardworking, but I do feel like you can't really have like ordinary people and community representatives like myself in these positions because you have these people who have been in the civil service for decades and decades who just steamroll you with their institutional knowledge. But there are also incredible officers too that I think I agree with what I'm saying. And I think Anna's also an officer and, you know, those are the type of awesome officers that we have. But unfortunately, I think unless we have that systemic kind of backing and ability for normal people to govern and have a say, then you can't really get anywhere. So I think constitutional transformation is really nice. needed if we want to be able to respond to challenges. Ooh, amazing, amazing. That's great. Constitutional change, no, no less. 
<laughs> um, Kay, Kay has, is clearly a big fan of yours too, and, and um, has given us all a post on the on the chat to on the Aotearoa Town Hall, and she's talking about the mayor and the business lobby being blocks to progress. And I think that we do need to acknowledge that that you know they are. I mean, you probably can't say this, but it's what we're saying in, in Christchurch that there are some some strong habits of um, giving over to developers and to yeah some business forces. But um, do you want to just talk really briefly about how the Aotearoa Town Hall connects into this constitutional change? Because I believe it's based on citizen assemblies, right? Yeah, pretty much. So it was, um, it's just, I think there's lots of different interesting kaupapa going on, like in different spaces, whether it's transport, urban design, housing, water, tetaia, whatever. But I think what we're trying to highlight through these conversations is not only bring together different voices that, people don't really get to hear from in the kind of mainstream but also I think the really important part is that we're showing how constitutional transformation and the centering um, of Te Tiriti or Waitangi how it benefits everybody and no matter where you're from no matter where you come from like Te Tiriti is the thing that brings us all together and gives us all a place to stand in Aotearoa so I think that's kind of of the big thing but we we like to explore all different topics but i think that's kind of the the crux of it all is that um unfortunately all of the problems that we have are really um expressions i think of a system that's outdated and needs to move on if we want to be able to catch up to or stand a chance against challenges that are coming at us so um that's kind of the premise for it and it's trying to bring everybody on board and and bring in people that engage everyone in society from young people older people um maori Pākehā, Tauiwi, wherever you come from, trying, trying to show that we can, we all have a stake in this and that we can all play a part in this and that constitutional transformation, although it seems like something that's like far over there, if we're having those conversations and reflecting, then that's, you know, we take a step closer every time. So just trying to make those strides um, towards a better Aotearoa, I think. Kia ora. That's terrific.